these saints had just the amazing ability to live gratitude, right? So they're just gratefully receptive to everything that God is doing, right? And I know that seems oversimplified. But gratitude, Thanksgiving is kind of thrown around a lot, but imagining, imagining entering into a space of life where everything I received or everything that happened to me uh, was able to be received just in gratitude from the hand of the Lord, right? And I, and again, that I, it almost sounds cliche. Oh, yeah, be grateful. Or, oh, yeah, everything's a gift. I know, yeah, but is that true for my life? And is that something I just want to be in that space? Like, is my heart receptive to what God wants to do in my life at every moment of the day? And I, can I receive that in gratitude of His Son? <laughs> Poco a poco vamos a llegar Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are We make our way Hey, hey. hey I'm Father Mark Mary <laughs> Hi, I'm Father Innocent I'm Father PT I'm Father Angelus I thought you were going to go, bro I was waiting oh, for you to no. open your oh, mouth oh, I loved how that happened We all just looked at each game other Game of chicken, I'm not going to go bro, first I own you <laughs> No, you don't I'm very disappointed in my team right now I'm very... <laughs> That was a tough start. Should we start again? That was very amateur. You want to start again? (laughs) No, I don't want to start again. Do you want to start again? No. All right. Hi, friends. Welcome back. It's good to be back together. Good to be with y'all. We just rocked it with Father Isaac. That was awesome, man. I was just like taking it in. Mm -hmm. I didn't have too much to say. We'll have a second to uh, bring it, go back to that for a second, particularly Father Angels' little prayer lines that happened like immediately after at Lord's oh, yes. already look at you like a good student putting it to work but we have some parish announcements parish never announcements. before done parish announcements do everybody want, be attentive I was gonna say do you want people sitting down for this please be seated please be well please continue doing whatever you want please but pay attention cue yeah. parish announcements with uh air horn thing <laughs> <laughs> that's not really an air horn worthy thing what parish announcements. Yeah. Maybe that's how you get like people's attention yeah, at the parish from now on. Please don't go away. I kind of have a rising anxiety right now. Should I worry about this? <laughs> no, you shouldn't be. But it's going to be a little bit more boring, but there's some transparency. You'll hear some numbers. We're going to talk about money for a second because here's what almost happened. We almost started having sponsored episodes. Mm. Mm. <laughs> tell me more but tell we, me more but we didn't because the thing is like there's opportunities where it's like okay here's this thing we want to talk about anyway and we're going to plug it anyway but also we could get paid to plug it but we're not going to do that just like we have so far not done like a patreon or some other types of do you know what patreon is Mm-mm. we haven't done anything where it's like okay if you want more you have to pay for it oh i see and i think in part of it is cause, well um nobody likes ads in their podcast and there's a particular i think especially depending on how it's done but if it's in the middle like there can be like a particular version to like a like a spiritual thing that has a ad in it particularly if you're franciscan yeah <laughs> <laughs> so just for a lot of reasons it's yeah, not a good yeah, idea. yeah and and we're trying i mean and we we take that into account we're trying to honor it i do think there's um there can be a funny understanding of how franciscans and money work because like we don't have bank accounts we don't have uh, yeah, personal, whatever, slush funds that we do, whatever. But at the same time, we're, we are, uh, if you will, fathers of the poor and spiritual fathers. And so, for example, we have a medical center that gives free care to the poor in Honduras that costs money. Is a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. We're in the midst of basically saving an orphanage, which is a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. You know, so that, so it's like we our works running the homeless shelter, right? Those do cost, right? But the Franciscan way is to, first and foremost, to to beg instead of like to start making money. You know, what I mean, to like have like a to whatever make beer, or cheese, or something like that. Um, so here's the situation with with each with our our podcast. What may not be known is that for each episode to come out, I just learned the number was about twice as many as I thought. There's about 15 different lay people who touch each episode, which is a lot. That is a lot. That is a lot. Um, and these lay people are not Franciscan <laughs> and they have bills and such. Um, and we're falling about $2,000 short each month on like, we're not quite <clears throat> making our budget from the donations. Um, which is, yeah, something, you know, um, and here's just kind of like our situation right now. I think we have, uh, like listener wise, 
and just again to kind of be honest with everybody, we we get between the last couple of months between ninety and like a hundred thousand downloads a month, which is which is pretty good. Probably from about like I don't know seventeen or eighteen thousand unique people. Each episode in its lifespan gets about sixteen or seventeen thousand, which is which is a lot. Um, and it's reaching a lot of people. And we're grateful for it. But we we're, we have about two hundred and fifty monthly donors, which we're grateful for. Yes, which super which grateful we're grateful for. for. It's not like a massive number compared to everyone who's listening. Um, so there's some growth in that. And so like, here's like our situation. Okay, certainly we're we're kind of falling under budget. We also just have some desires, I think, to keep the purity of it, to keep it, to not have to talk money or to like really try and like sell stuff or or whatever. And if we did ads, which it would only be things that we would have promoted anyway. Um, so what we're going to try and do, and, and there is a hope to expand with one more episode a week, which would be kind of like a, like an interview style thing. So we can bring in a lot of different guests. Right. And so to kind of get to our needs, to get to a little bit of growth of expansion and have like a slight amount for kind of ongoing sort of whatever creativity, uh, creativity. Yeah. And so that we wouldn't have to talk about asking for money for the podcast, maybe ever again. For the, we're going to try and get 300 new monthly donors over the next three months. And so, you know, if it, and I do think this is something like, you know, if you're like a college student and you're somebody and you listen to a lot of Catholic podcasts and you don't support any of them, you don't necessarily have to support ours, but I do think it's a good practice to, you know, tithe a little bit, tithe a little bit, right? And I realize that, for example, if you gave like $10 a month, that's not as, you're not going to get as many options as you would, I don't think, for them. Netflix or from Hulu or from what else the people do people order pizza still in college people like grub, grub hug? no <laughs> thank you for your addition <laughs> for um, here for but it. here's the thing right here's the thing we're not you know I mean like this podcast I want I, I need you to think of us as like the the organic mm. locally sourced mm. um pure tomato juice <laughs> Of wow. the that's wow. exactly thank podcast you, thank world. Thank you for my addition, huh? Okay, please. <laughs> you know, if you want the store bought cheap, cheap stuff, that's not good for you. A lot Canned. of hormones in it. <laughs> did you say hormones? He did. He yeah, did. that's what happened. Isn't that a thing? Yeah. Anyway, so we're we're hoping yeah. just again, we're just gonna for the next couple months or until we hit that, if we do get an increase in three hundred monthly donors, five bucks, ten bucks, if you can do twenty bucks, if it's if it involves some sort of sacrifice, cool. Meaning like you cut out pizza once a month or. <laughs> It's a real thing. Like people like, or you don't get pizza. like, okay, this year you don't get one more pair of Jordans or one more pair of high heels or Why something like that. At me? Um, <laughs> that's okay. That's like, it's okay to sacrifice for some of this stuff. But again, like the hope is that we don't have to do other things that are going to bring in money. We don't have to like, we can have, for example, we can have merch and not have to like have this huge hustle to like sell people. I don't, we don't have to like do like a Patreon thing where we're like trying to like, I don't know. I just feel a little bit, like I'm not all about that and we can keep it ad free, but we do have costs. We have people and, and stuff like that. So, so that's just what we're going to do for the next couple months. Paul Mark Murray, you're good at what you do. That was well said, well pitched. Mm-hmm. You want me to write a few letters? Or write some letters? Yeah, I want you to write a few letters. Can we, uh, can we have patches on our habits? <laughs> Sponsored patches? No. <laughs> no, the whole point is not to be doing that. Put a patch oh, on your okay. forehead. Were, we talk, <laughs> you were, listening? were you actually listening yeah. to what actually, he just well, said? When we talk about like encounter ministries, we want it to be like, oh, okay, they're talking about this mm-hmm. because they actually believe in it, not because mm-hmm. they yeah, paid them, you know, mm-hmm. $500 for this episode or whatever it is. Um, so that's none of the patches, right? <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What was the other yeah. funny thing about this? Oh, and here's the thing. I, I feel like the people of God are good people and our listeners are good people. And they, they, again, it's like, if you don't give, it doesn't mean you're not a good person, but I'm like, Hey, like, I I think that if we just ask people to, to, to give and just what our needs are, I think that people will help us out. Mm -hmm. So if you're able to do that, we'd be grateful. And, um, and then again, this will be the last big announcement of this. Hopefully forever, the next couple months we'll ask to particularly for monthly donors, but then hopefully, you know, once we hit that 300, we can, shut Stop. up and maybe we'll you know then we can sort of like if we want to help promote like an orphanage or something like that we can do that but that's the situation cool cool thank Sweet. you for the parish announcement thank you because i've seen other you know like other parishes they like put in the bulletin the monthly ex- like expenses things like that you know and then they'll say something like hey you know what like if our roof falls off we'll just celebrate mass here anyway and that's but like if we actually 
we actually need some things to happen for that. <laughs> I, I wish we could say like, we don't have any money, we'll just make the podcast anyway, but we don't have the skill set amongst ourselves just to do it for free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And we're Sweet. trying, cool. All right, so here's what we're talking about this week. Smooth transition. We're talking about something that has nothing, or it has something not really to do with that. Um, I read for Hallow. Do you guys know what Hallow is? Yeah, nice one. Uh, I read for Hallow, Catholic app. <laughs> Are they sponsoring us? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> yeah, nice one. <laughs> <laughs> I read for Hallow uh, their audiobook of The Practice of the Presence of God by Brother Lawrence. Mm. And so here's, I read it, you know, which was a fun thing to do in one day, but I read it like four times in one day and read it again in preparation much, for this podcast. How much is that? Like, how big is the book? Not that long. Okay. But it's actually a lot when you have to get like word perfect and like not have weird sounds or whatever. It takes longer than you think. What if you'd like mess up? Do you just stop and do it over? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. I, lo- I actually kind of enjoyed it. But um, yeah, it was cool. So anyway, we're talking about the book. And so if you and they're doing a whole bunch of new audio books. And so what we're going to do is a four part series kind of going through it. It's a kind of a classic. Mm. Um, but also, I think that because so it's, it's an audio book that you can get if you go to Hallow. And so if you listen to our podcast, you probably already listen to spiritual stuff. And you probably don't find my voice absolutely repulsive. Well. You know what I mean? <laughs> Not like there's some, there's some degree of bearableness. Yes, otherwise. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, that, that's there. Oh. Or you can just get the book and read it. <laughs> Do that. If you're old fashioned. <laughs> All right. It's a classic. Do you guys know anything about it? Do you want to say anything about it? What do you, I feel like Father no. Innocent had some relationship with this book. I, all, only to the fact that I read it when I was in formation, Father Benedict loved practice of the presence and abandonment divine providence. And it's a really easy way to teach relational prayer to the young guys. Mm-hmm. He's not the same dude that writes the divine abandonment to divine providence. No, right? no, no. no, no. I, it's, they're just right? very similar. Yeah, like yeah. The, the spirituality of yeah. relational prayer, like this conversation with the Lord mm-hmm. so consistently. Is, I've never read this book or any relationship. When I was first... <clears throat> asked to read it, I was thinking it was the Divine Presence or Providence book. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, Father Benedict is one of his classes, it's one of his favorites. Yeah, it'd be a great one. Very different. And then I was like, oh, it's actually a totally, it's different, totally book. different book. Totally different book. But it's a classic nonetheless. It is a classic. Nonetheless. Yeah. I don't have the notes with it. I, I actually should be. But Brother Lawrence, he was a, I think he was a religious, he was a Carmelite <laughs> who lived some oh, guy some time, time, time in some place. <laughs> what something. A, oh, man, what an amateur. No, bro, you're doing great. Okay. No, you're good. But no, everyone's hurt. No, no, you wrote those. You wrote four <laughs> episodes. You're no, doing great. Bro, they'll, they'll Google it, bro. They'll work it out. We're your support team here. <laughs> Thanks, guys. That was helpful. Um, what, else, what else? What else we got? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So for the first thing I think we want to. So here. So he's this. He's this brother, kind of a, a religious brother, a, um, meaning not a priest, not a cleric, who kind of lived a, a bit of a humble life of service but had lived or learned to this kind of this practice of the presence of God, this kind of ongoing presence in conversation with the Lord at all times and in all situations. One of the things I think is great about him and worth highlighting is he, instead of having 30 or 40 years of darkness, he had like 30 years of consolation. Mm -hmm. So it's good to know that (laughs) that type of thing exists. You know what I mean? I love that. So here's, here's one of his opening, here's a quote, which I, what I kind of offer to put this, possibility before us so the time business said he meaning brother lawrence does not differ with me from the time of prayer and in the noise and clutter of my kitchen i think a lot of people are going to relate to this Mm. in the noise and the clutter of my kitchen while several persons are at the same time time calling for different things i possess god in as great tranquility as if i were upon my knees at the blessed sacrament Mm. give me some of that yeah that's pretty good give me some of that so here's the thing He's in, he's in a situation. He's in the kitchen, like a very familiar situation to many of our listeners. There's several persons at the same time calling for different things, and he is so he's aware of the presence of God. He possesses the God in this great tranquility and peace, as if I were upon my knees at the blessed sacrament. And so we're going to talk about how to get there. How does that How does that feel? I mean, that feels awesome because I think it's it's kind of what we talk about all the time. And Brother Lawrence is just radically simple in 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 his in his focus, right? He he makes it all about relationship. Like, can can you really live this way? Can you make a decision to 
the time of my business does not differ from the time of my prayer, right? Like he, he's living one life. He's living, he's in relationship with Jesus, no matter where he's at, what he's doing, who he's talking about. If there's 10 people in the kitchen or just me, <clears throat> right? Um, there's just something just so wonderfully simple about this man who had a faith to, to know that he was called to live in a relationship and this could pervade every part of your day. And you notice here, he's a lay, he's a lay brother, right? He's not a professional religious in the sense of like, He's a priest, he's trained, he's intellectually or academically trained. No, this man is, is getting up and, and just kind of just living this radical discipleship, and we've been talking about it for weeks now, but what does it mean just to live in that relationship? And we talk about, this is all we talk about here, yeah. is just doubling down on relationship. So I'm excited to talk about it because it's, it's just so accessible to every, everyone listening. It's attractive at the end of the day, just because like I desire it, you know? Um, and it's beautiful to think that the Lord desires it too, you know, just to talk and be in relationship with us. And so, yeah, there's plenty of things I could say, but I don't want to say something I'm not supposed to say by jumping the gun. So let's leave it there. Thank you, Father PT. You're welcome. It was very Father thoughtful. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the affirmation. <laughs> just uh, still living in the wake of uh, Father Isaac a little bit. Um, what if we had just this opportunity to really believe and have faith in this? Just the reality of this is this is what it means to be in relationship with God. This is what it means to experience Him, like just to let that uh, act of faith exercise from our hearts that in the midst of my daily life, in the midst of my work, in the midst of my um, relationships and my family, whatever that God really wants to encounter me and be in relationship with me. Um, so I just think it's awesome, and I think yeah, I want something's moving into my heart. Uh, we talk about it here, but even even in our life teaching the postulants, just the reality of God. And I say this often, but God's not limited to my holy hour. What it was it mean to live in relationship throughout the day? People want to get up, want to go to bed, everywhere in between. So I just want to believe in that in mm. a deeper way, and I think it's the, the audience to to extend the invitation to like to really believe in the, the truth of this is how God wants to be in relationship with us. Great. Here's another another line of his, which I think is great. What, another nugget. I forgive you. <laughs> he knows not what he does. It's just such an ugly, gross word. There's nothing <laughs> redeeming about that word. It's not funny. People think it's funny. It's not funny. Oh, it's not cool. It's just gross. Yeah, ask Jesus about that. But we're just going to choose choose <laughs> yeah. Jesus right now. We're yeah. just going to be with Can we pray over you right now? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Let's lay hands on Do I have permission to touch you? <laughs> no, you didn't ask permission. You failed the test. All right. Here's, uh, he's, he's, the way the book works is it's initially like, uh, the recounting of some of his thoughts and then a number of his letters. So this is from one of his letters and he's referring to himself in the third person. Again, just to put this in front of you as, as a possibility, right? Uh, he is, in, is now so accustomed, referring to himself, Brother Lawrence, he, he is now so accustomed to that divine presence that he receives from it continual suckers upon all occasions. For about 30 years, his soul has been filled with joys so continual and sometimes so great that he is forced to use means to moderate them and to hinder their appearing outwardly. That's pretty good. That's good for you, brother. Lawrence. <laughs> that's amazing. Good for you. Uh, first of all, the words S U C C O U R S. Thank you for the clarification. <laughs> uh, I think it's, it's like, I think it's not, lolli you, not lollipops. I think it's pronounced suckers. To be honest, I don't know. I pronounce it in my head usually because I read it. But like the people from like Louisiana they call her like cool. whatever. Like our, our lady Pomp Secor or something like that. No, they call her Pomp, Pomp Sucker. Like her. Yeah. I don't think it, I feel like Secor should I be. I trust you. It's like Tupac. Sucker. <laughs> like that? Did you edit there? Um, <laughs> all right. So that's a, just to put that in your little toolbox, you know what I mean? Because we're so quick to think that um, every time there's a little bit of a desolation, we're on our way to being Mother Teresa <laughs> 40 years of darkness doesn't have to be what if maybe every time you had a little consolation you thought okay here's 30 30 years of joy so continual i gotta hide them from people and it's happened apparently <laughs> but how do you get there so number one thing i think that brother lawrence has for us um for, i think at the heart of it and we will kind of go into the prayer thing is he is this the kind of like well this this um what's the word this this kind of resignation this radical surrender this radical surrender to God in all things. And, um, and I do th like, okay, all I want is, is to hear the Lord's will, voice to do his will. And if the Lord comes to me in consolations, if he comes to me in sufferings, uh, there, I receive them both, both equally as, as gifts from the Lord. And, um, 
And I think part of like really growing in that with the spirit is part of probably why he was, if you will, almost like, um, in, in some degree, like invincible, not like in a nuanced sense to some of the sufferings of life. I think he, the starting place for him again was this, this radical trust and faith in, 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 a, in a real relationship. But it seems like to, in order to live this way, that I'm just going to surrender whether what, no matter what comes <clears throat> or whatever the circumstances of my life are, like you just really, like you just know who God is. Mm -hmm. Like he just really believed that God is good. Mm -hmm. And he really believes that God is close. And he really, he, like, this is who God is. He wants to come close to me. He wants to, like, we talked about Father Isaac, like, God actually wants to speak to me. Like, this is my inheritance. He's, he, he just has a radical confidence. And even when you re read his writings, it's, like, so simple. You're like, well, yeah, if this is true, then I can, you know. <laughs> like, he just knows who God is. And there's a jealousy in my own heart for that, to live in a place, and, and constellation helps. Right. <laughs> but, but just to to live every moment of your life, walk through your day just knowing who God is. And you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to take control, right? In that if God is who he says he is, then I can really live in this relationship. I can really receive from him. And then I can go to bed and get up and tomorrow and do the same thing, right? And, and we are radically gonna oversimplify, but I think that's the grace of Brother Lawrence. So that's what he does. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just attractive, like what PT said. And just to hone in on the word, <clears throat> These saints had just the amazing ability to live gratitude, right? So they're just gratefully receptive to everything that God is doing, right? And I know that seems oversimplified. But gratitude, Thanksgiving is kind of thrown around a lot, but imagining, imagining entering into a space of life where everything I received or everything that happened to me uh, was able to be received just in gratitude from the hand of the Lord, right? And I, and again, that I almost sounds cliche. Oh, yeah, be grateful. Or oh yeah, everything's a gift. I know. Yeah, but. Is that true for my life? And is that something I just want to be in that space? Like, is my heart receptive to what God wants to do in my life at every moment of the day? And I, can I receive that in gratitude at his son? And just kind of being an awe and wonder, like it, it develops this part of me that I can just be like, Lord, you're so good. Like even this morning, like I had a series of conversations, both blessed and difficult, but I just felt the Lord's presence and I, and I felt like I could receive it from him. And so then therefore I left that conversation just like, whoa, like there's no way that was, that was of me. Right. So anyway, I just think gratitude is this, is this a, something that we just continually have to go back to over and over and over again. We can never graduate from being grateful for what God is doing in my life. And brother Lawrence had this ability to receive it simply. And his heart was like overwhelmed by the small things, the little things that were just what God was doing in his life. Um, yeah, I, I, just, I really desire that. Um, I think surrender and just all of this is just a movement from basically, yeah, the mentality where like what's mine is mine and what's yours is yours. But like, just like as Jesus was praying to the Father, so looking up John 17, like just rejoicing in the gift of everything, like the, the apostles, the disciples, this moment in time right before he's going to die, like, okay, Lord, thank you for this moment to be able to, to save salvation, to save history, mm -hmm. to save mankind. Um, because when we hold on to what's mine and we don't let, what the, let, let, let the Lord in there, that's when things become disruptive, not as easy, attractive, whatever it is. And yeah, the, sim the surrender is simple. Okay, Lord, it's yours, you know? And so just the freedom mm -hmm. that that brings is attractive of every single moment I have an opportunity to experience the Lord looking at me in love or being with me or, or however that's felt or expressed. Nonetheless, like it's not yours to hold on to, um, not to possess it in a yeah in an ugly way, but just to give it back to the Lord. Okay, Lord, it's yours. Um, somebody helped me with this in the sense of, just teach me the simple prayer of like, okay, Jesus, I made a mess of this, you know, help me, <laughs> you know, like whatever situation. I did it again. Yeah. <laughs> I made a mess. <laughs> you know, like it could be something freeing for us. And so, but yeah, just getting to that place of surrendering and just, yeah, just Lord, it's right back to you, you know? Um, so a joy, praise God, a sorrow, praise God, you know? And so we recently heard a story this morning of one of our brother priest friends who in his, <clears throat> he lived in his, his first, he was the, doing an Easter vigil at a parish where this friary helps out with. And um, it was very early on into his priesthood. And he, he gave like a 35 minute Easter vigil homily with a, a string of quotes. And then there, I guess there's some like some ladies in the congregation who like don't hold back. Mm -hmm. And immediately after uh, mass, they went straight up to him like, Father, that was way too long. That was yeah. way over our heads, <laughs> this sort, sort, of, sort of thing. So, um, I'm going to try not to be that guy. Have you recovered from that oh, experience? <laughs> I was going to say, what's the point of that? Your string of quotes is great. That was the point. <laughs> so I'm going to share a quote. Um, and then we'll kind of continue on. Because I think this is, this is Brother Lawrence in his own words. Um, 
that we ought to give ourselves up to God with regard both the things temporal and spiritual and seek our satisfaction only in the fulfilling of his will, whether he lead us by suffering or consolation for all would be equal to a soul truly resigned. So I, I do think we were going to talk about his specific practice of kind of this ongoing conversation. Maybe not so much. If you want to like have the history of how we got there, you can read his book. He, he shares about it a little bit, but I do think the foundation, the soil, which we, uh, I don't think the practice works without again this foundational this foundation of radical surrender and resignation resignation to god and his will and all things right and i think this you give god this radical freedom in space and that now from there if you will from that kind of radical emptiness uh the lord can fill it and so just kind of if, if we can kind of be invited um just in our own hearts to make again a new kind of surrender uh to the lord and giving him per- permission to be a good shepherd in our lives and to lead us um however he desires and um to just say we'll follow yeah um because it's once again like the lord knows our hearts like he knows everything it's not like we can hide something from him without him knowing like it's okay and so just to be yeah just to be who you are before him like Mm -hmm. in prayer and allow that and once again just even like prayer, as you're talking to the postulants, isn't just like the the time I dedicate in front of God and I start talking to him. That's great to do that. But prayer can be every single moment of your life as we're going to come to experience where, okay, in this in this moment of struggle, I'm in traffic and I'm, and I'm angry and whatever it is, this could be a moment of prayer. Like, Lord, come on, like what's going on here? You know, like from the anguish of your heart. Because I think sometimes the temptation is to, to once again, hey, like Jesus, you're awesome. And like, like edit it or like just a nice prayer, Jesus, whatever mm-hmm. it is. And he's like, no, no, I want your heart and I want everything that's there. Um, and so that takes humility. Um, and it's even more so just, just coming with the poverty of who you are, the, the things that are lacking and presenting it. Lord, Lord, you know my heart, you know who I am. Um, so help me in these areas and just sit before him in love. Sure. And there's this place of receiving, right? Um, right? We're not in control and we can receive everything from the Lord. And and the response is, again, it's a desire. I, I have another quote here that I was just moved by is that, once we live in this place, it's called the practice of the presence of God, right? Once we put ourselves in his presence and we, we like long to receive from him everything as like good sons and daughters. And then we can t- make responses that I drove away from my mind, everything that was capable of interrupting my thought of God. I drove away everything that, that took me out of this relationship. And, and I think that we talk about that often, like the small things that interrupt this relationship mm-hmm. that, that pull me away. Right. And, and I think, that's what's going to be so helpful. This is going to be practical and small things that are going to keep us practicing this the living in the presence of God, right? Mm-hmm. Practicing in, being in this place of receiving everything from such a good father, no matter what the circumstances of my life are. Um, but I, I guess I'm just moved because there's so many things that interrupt it. Right. Our world is so loud. And, it, and exteriorly, interiorly, my anxiety, my, my need to control, my need to understand everything and explain everything. And so this is a real, it, it's a challenge. Well, what we're inviting people to do is to place yourselves in a real relationship and in, in a real presence of the, the presence of God and not be afraid to say, okay, like I need to live differently. I need to be in a place where I can say, no, I don't, I don't want to think like that or I don't want to act like that or I don't want to speak like that because it takes me away from this. But I want to, Jesus, I just want to be in your presence. What we totally get though, guys, is like the challenge is, is that, okay, but people are insecure. <clears throat> And people are hurt and people are distracted. And so it's just like, okay, yeah, just put yourself in the presence of God. But like, what's at the root of, of our inability to surrender? I mean, because it's, it's like, okay, so if I really knew God and I really knew his love and goodness, then I'm not surrendering myself into this space into some like abyss or some like anonymous reality. Um, so I often, and we talk about it often too, but like so what's keeping people from doing this? Well, I feel my insecurity. I feel the pain. I feel the hurt. I feel the rejection. I feel the abandonment. And what if I go to this space and I surrender myself, but then what's going to happen? It's a big risk, right? So we say it often, but the, the risk is that we maybe don't know who God really is if we're not willing to surrender to this space, right? And so I think the joy of, of pretty consistently trying to proclaim the truth of who God is again when we can is just is, is the gift because it's like, okay, Father, great, nice. Okay, like, yeah, I'm supposed to surrender to this space. Well, sometimes it's hard for people. And sometimes it's like, well, what if I, what if he's not there? 
because there's plenty of other people that aren't there for me when I surrender to a supposedly loving spaces in my life and I'm not received and I'm, I, I don't know how to do it, right? So anyway, it just, we sometimes again, we episode after episode, it's just like, who is God? And, and that's who I'm surrendering myself to. It's not this scary, um, anonymous place where I have to like let go and, and then wonder what's gonna happen, right? So I just think it's hard. I, it's like, oh yeah, this is great. Sounds awesome, just surrender. But sometimes it's hard and people don't really know how to do that. Anyway, who was the core guy? Ah, oh, man, this is like back in Lent. Uh, one of two core missionaries. Dave, David or Jake? I think it was Jake. But he just had this killer line of like, we don't surrender over to ideas or like we don't fall yeah, in yeah, love yeah. with ideas. I can't, I can't follow or fall in love with an idea. Right. And so it has to be personal, right? To, your, to the question. Like it has to be the person of God who I've experienced in a real tangible way. And maybe you haven't experienced that. And that's, that's okay, but because you haven't experienced doesn't mean he doesn't, he doesn't want you to experience that or he's not there begging and inviting you to take this moment and chance. Hey, like last episode, take a risk. You know, just, just believe that this was going to happen. You know, and so I wasn't going to go there. I know you're smiling. <laughs> take a risk, try the best. <laughs> oh, wow, you were just talking about that without me? No. No, 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 I just brought that up now. Or he just brought that up That's now. where you were at, right? <laughs> no, I wasn't going <laughs> to say. Weren't thinking, but that's what you were thinking. Yeah, that's what I think you were thinking, yeah. Anyway, take a risk, try the bisque. This is about Father Angelus' warm tilapia smoothie from seminary. It's a wound. Hopefully wow. we don't have warm. to go there again. Oh, <laughs> it's delicious. Wait, you don't like what? the bisque? You pay a lot of money in restaurants for stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we defined it. It's not necessarily a bisque, though. Anyway, let's <laughs> surrender to the moment here and allow God to love us here. Can I, can I get a... Uh, I'm going cool. to read a quote, Airhorn. Fair, 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 fair. <laughs> Wait a minute. Why am I just doing your bidding like that's this why little I asked. service That's monkey? why I asked. I yeah. asked. I know like nobody really likes to be that guy. Um, I was, I think I did that right. You touched me without asking. Um, <laughs> Edit that out, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's what, like to just define what, like what I think we're talking about, this practice of the presence of God. This is, this is again, uh, Brother Lawrence in his own word. Okay. I make it my business only to persevere in his holy presence, wherein I keep myself by a simple attention and a general fond regard to God, which I may call an actual presence of God, or to speak better, a habitual, silent, and secret conversation of the soul with God. And so I think that's, that's this, a simple attention, a general fond regard to God, or in other words, a, the developing, the practicing of a habitual, silent, and secret conversation of God with the soul. Sounds good. Yeah. I, I mean, I love that because I think it's the medicine that we all need <laughs> and it's possible and ha we have to practice it. Um, hence the title of the book. Um, but I just think it's so tender and, and so gentle the way the Lord just wants to be with us. I, I mean, it's and just, just to be honest, um, not that I'm going to drop a big name here, but, but John mm. of the cross is something simpler, similar. When he says like it's a it's a simple like loving attentiveness right, um, a habitual silent and secret conversation. John of the Cross will use similar words right. So you had Brother Lawrence and John of the Cross are very different spectrums of the spiritual life, but they're all getting at this. They're both getting at the same reality that there's just a simple a silent attentiveness to the presence of God in my life, and what that means from moment to moment. I, I yeah, I'm moved by it. just thinking about when we used to see our grandparents <clears throat> sitting together. They weren't necessarily talking, but maybe they were singing at the table together. And there's just like simple ability to be with one another after many years of marriage and many years of being each other's presence. Right. So it's just like on a human level, just this ability to be in another's presence and be, I love the word attentive, right? Just I'm attentive to them, but we're not talking. We're not necessarily doing something together. Um, yeah, it's just, it's beautiful. A, a word I wrote down is like being, being in another's gaze, right? As we look upon one another, right? So when we adore Jesus, when we look upon the cross, when we look upon the blessed sacrament, he, he's gazing upon us and we're gazing at him. Do we have the ability and the space in our hearts just to rest in that presence and allow that to be enough? Like the quality of this experience where I'm present to him and he's present to me, not just in prayer, but in life. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. And it's, I make it my business. Like it's, this is important for him, you know, like it's not just like casually. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna take some time and do this. OK, no, it's like it's my business. Like I, I need to do this. And uh, yeah, it's just beautiful. Just like practically sometimes just just stop and think, OK, what is like, how does God feel about me right now? 
you're like in the middle of office, office work or your dishes, whatever you're doing. Just like, I wonder what God's thinking about me right now. You know, and it's like, <laughs> just like, you don't have to like sit there and go like in some ecstatic union and just like drop the dishes, drop to your knees or whatever it is. But like, just, you know, the thought like, okay. And because that, I think just brings us back to the place of, oh, he's, he's here. He's with me. Like I, I can be in conversation with him and hopefully or maybe that opens up something for you as far as like talking with him. But, but once again, just having the ability to, to do that, you know, um, just to be aware of his, his holy presence. And so could we be a loving, let's us, us three be just attentive to Father Mark Mary, just like live on air, just mm. kind of. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, nah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I got something else. Can I, can I jump in? Yes, please. I was, uh, this, this doesn't, he doesn't use this word here, but like, how do I make it my business to persevere in his, in, in living in, in his God's presence? And mm. I think a big part of this very Franciscan, there's an incarnational reality. That's why things matter. Like, mm. like the, the stuff of our life. And I was reminded of this real simply. And it was, it was, uh, we were, <laughs> we were on a healing retreat with sister Miriam and Michelle Benzinger a couple weeks ago. And the, and the guys just loved them and they loved the guys. It was just beautiful to see. And there was a moment when I was just talking, we were talking about um, just the presence of God and and the gift of these reminders we need kind of consistently throughout our day. And Michelle just referenced, again, it was a, it was a wider context, but um, I don't even think she listens to this. I just want to get it right. But um, she referenced her, her wedding ring mm. that she had just noticed in the moment. And she's like, you know, I just looked at my wedding ring. Wedding ring. Wedding and, wing. <laughs> my wedding ring. <laughs> my wedding ring. And there's just law sounds there. Um, and she, she said something just like welled up in her. She remembered two things. Obviously, her, her bridegroom, um, Chris, um, just the beauty of their love for one another. But on the ring itself, it, it has like a, a number of saints. And so it, it like she was reminded by a physical reality about, about the presence, about the, the, the bigger reality of what's at stake than, than just what's like what you see or what, you, what you're feeling. <laughs> And um, so I think there's an incarnational reality, and we'll talk about it later, but that's why I love teaching the postulants about, about prayer and about our cell. Like when you walk into your cell, brothers, there should be images that, that help us make our business persevering in the presence of God, right? You have the cart crosses, you have the icons, you have a candle, right? These things all point to a reality that make it our business to live in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. Right in, in, in our houses, or not our, our, our houses, yes, but like in, when you're at home, right, there's crucifixes, there's Catholic art, there's things that, that need to remind us that pull us into reality, pull us into what's most real. And then they can say, wow, it just reminds us consistently um, what, what it means to live. I mean, he, he uses that word, just, I make it my business. How do I make it my business? These constant reminders in small ways um, that he's present. But isn't this the glory of St. Francis? Isn't this what he got right? I mean, he doesn't just love birds. He doesn't just love brother, son, and sister. I mean, he doesn't love all things. It's because they're revelations of God present in the midst of his creation, right? And that's why he freaked out. That's why he had this beautiful, like, devotion to everything, literally. <laughs> because all of it was a glimpse. All of it was like this literal revelation of God who is real and present and, and pursuing me, right? It's beautiful. I mean, in St. Saint Francis, more than anyone possibly arguably maybe but like the reality of like this is the this is why he had such a passion for the earth had a, such a passion for things around him because of this precise thing except for flies he didn't like flies, <laughs> like flies cuz they were well, why cuz they were lazy they didn't work to it was something like that right it was like yeah, they, yeah, did, yeah. they didn't really they didn't follow the gospel mandate about he who doesn't work shouldn't eat mm. You said you <laughs> felt like you were going to say something. Mm -mm. By the way, if you want to watch a video, a very well done video on how to pray with real, religious images, you can watch my Ascension, recent Ascension. Ascension Presents video. I set you up for that, bro. Where, I, I just tossed you Where for you some that. reason I was calling them reli re uh, religious what wings? things wedding or religious wings. items. I don't know why. After I'm like, why did I just recall? Like, <laughs> I just call like, who calls them religious items, religious images? So if you watch that video and you wondered why is he calling them religious items, I, I don't, don't know. I don't know. I just did, <laughs> and I was, I wasn't willing to go back and just do the whole video again. Bro, when you do stuff by yourself, things mm. yeah, can get, can get weird. It's true. Mm. It's true. There's a couple of I'm gonna use a couple of images. Um, you just push past that. I like that. What's that? Nothing. <laughs> I mean, he's a couple. He clearly insulted you. Yeah. you Who did? Back. You were he, he, a couple of us. Yeah. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> Stop right back around. <laughs> that was funny. Um, a, a couple of ideas of what this could look like. Number one, it's the worst of the ideas, but uh, you know there is something I think common to the human experience. Many a common human experience. Maybe not everybody. Um, I know it's not everybody. 
but like there's like this like kind of like like having like a little pet like in the house who like follows you around there's something about like the like the <laughs> there, a, like this is the worst. Whoa, 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 this is the worst one right <laughs> yeah, yeah okay. it, it gets better it gets better from here. Right, it gets better from here there is this like kind of this human experience of like <laughs> liking just having like a you know a friendly presence that's kind of always with you and i do think okay it's in a very different way <laughs> but i do think like the way in which you're aware of like you know the pet the way you enter like you say you say you're working from the way you interact with them the way there's like there is this like a little kind of like ongoing awareness and interaction with them that's pretty simple but but ongoing and that seems to like make yeah life feel less lonely and i do think that that is like i think like that kind of desire and that type of relationship i think um on a much elevated level is possible with god yeah, so not, you had great, not a great friend. idea, but, but good. <laughs> <laughs> you had the whole imaginary friend thing going. I was like, okay, he's gonna pull up from this. <laughs> but there is something about just having, I, I that, agree. having I agree. that kind of presence. And I know because you're like, attentive. There's something attentive about this presence, yeah, like a dog or an imaginary friend. <laughs> and again, it's like a I, cat kind of just kind of around. And, uh, well, I was thinking more. Whatever. We don't have to get into the animal. Whatever animal you prefer. <clears throat> Turtle. <Okay>, hamster. <laughs> Canary. <laughs> Guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so edified by you guys. Beta fish. Never, don't donate any money. This podcast <laughs> should sing. What's put us out of our misery? You're the one bringing the secret life of pets over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm with you, bro. No, I, got, I got you. I was with you. Oh, all right. Thanks, Father. What do you got? What else you got? <laughs> <laughs> you said this is the worst. Let's, let's go up from here. There was something well. very moving to me. I think you guys will appreciate this. And, and I think this is good because sometimes we sort of say things like are too like, oh, that's like kind of pious. But in a sense, what we're talking about is like a an hyper spiritual spiritualization or uh, to, uh, like not honoring enough our humanity, whatever. But um, one of the, the postulants went on a run and like where we mark where we went, he said, uh, run with Jesus. And I think. And he, he has this whole thing. He's shared about it before that he used to go and runs with Jesus. And the idea is like he put on his, and he almost kind of like prayerfully experienced it. Like as he's putting on his like running shoes, Jesus is putting on his running shoes. And then they would go on a run together, right? And in these situations, he's not like listening to anything else. He's having this conversation with the Lord while he's <clears throat> running. And I think that's kind of mm. like, as you might go for a run with a dog, you know what I mean? <laughs> and it makes it a much more, I no, we okay. That. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that, I think there's something about that that's attractive yeah, in, in, in what we're talking about. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause like Jesus likes the things we like, you know, like, I mean, as long as they're not like objectively sinful, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, I, yeah. That was a bad example too. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, like I, I could run with Jesus. I could play basketball with Jesus. You need Jesus to play. You basketball couldn't swim with, with Jesus. You couldn't swim with Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh man but no it's it's something where okay like i can invite the lord into this hmm. into this activity this recreational thing that I'm, I'm using as rest or whatever it is but like i could do with jesus like it's that's a beautiful sentiment and the thing is bro is that you cannot not do it with jesus there's a double mm -hmm. negative there but know. you know it's funny we just yeah. have to be present we have mm -hmm. to he's not he's always with us right. he, he's waiting to be invited into everything we're doing right so he he's with you anyway but he wants us to be radically t attentive because he wants to speak to us, right? And and so that's what's beautiful. Like whether, I know who it is, I was going to say, we'll just say his name, Omar. It's like Omar goes on a run with Jesus intentionally in mm -hmm. relationship. Mm -hmm. It's very beautiful. Right. But, you know, Jesus is going to be with Omar anyway. Right. But but Jesus wants us to live in just in this radically more attentive. And then we're open. And then we can receive something just more deeper, right? Yeah. And it just kind of, sorry, dispels the lie no, of okay. like, <laughs> if I you know, try to live this way, all of a sudden I have to do everything all the time, like in this like super holy, pious way, mm -hmm. you know, like, no, like, y yes, your life will change relationally with Jesus, but like maybe practically looking on the outside, looking in, it's not going to be too different, you know? And so, cause sometimes we could have that, the life from the evil one, like, oh, you have to give all the fun things if you're going to start, you know, praying to God and being totally his, mm -hmm. not necessarily. I think time and time again, we just, there's an invitation to radical simplicity. It's not complicated. It's not um, uh, a recipe. It's not something that I have to go and, and, and figure out. And it's just like long developed plan of then do this, this, and this, these steps to happiness or whatever, right? So it's great. It's a gift mm -hmm. because it's like all I literally have to do is live my day and open my heart up to the Lord mm -hmm. and radically believe he's with me. And then that space, that opening in my heart then does something when he looks at me, mm -hmm. when he loves me, and when he pours his life into me. And that's when we start to just be more and more aware of like, oh gosh, this is what it means that he's with me. This is what it means for my life to be changed in his presence. Um, 
Yeah. And for the sake of, <coughs> of just holding these few episodes together, especially with Father Isaac, like I do think we need to pray for faith. Jesus, help me believe that this is actually true. Help me believe and have a faith that I can see you present or I can experience you present, right? I think you, this is, we, we, we believe this, right? You might not see Jesus. I mean, most times you don't see Jesus, mm -hmm. but you believe. Jesus, I wanna believe that you're actually with me on my run. Right. Like I wanna believe when I go for a walk or I'm with my friends or with their brothers, like I wanna actually believe that you are here, mm -hmm. right? So I think, it, again, we've been talking about the gift of faith. Jesus, help, give me the gift, gift of faith to actually believe that you are present at every moment of my life. I'm sorry, I'll let you go after this quote, Master Flex. But um, what happens is, <laughs> like in the in the gospel stories, right? So Peter and John were washing their nets on the shore, doing every day whatever they do, and Jesus meets them. You know, the Samaritan woman's going to the well. Jesus meets her there. You know, like so, Jesus wants to meet us in the everyday activities, like in the things that we do, and, and then from there, the relationships blossoms, it opens up, and then our life might look differently, but it's with Him, and it's a beautiful thing because once again. He desires his relationship. He wants to be with us. And he just wants his simply just, hey, I'm here with you. Acknowledge me. <laughs> like, mm. I love you. And I just want to spend time with you. I really like you. I really <laughs> I like, like spending you. time with you. <laughs> I like spending time with you. Just be with me. You know, like, and, and that's it. You know, like, sometimes it's embarrassing. Father Mark Mary walks into the office like, hey, you follow PT, spend time. I'm like, no. Like, I don't like it. <laughs> 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 I, I, I accept <laughs> this persecution as much as I would. Consolation. <laughs> Whatever you want, Lord. That's all I want. <laughs> He's practicing it. It's yeah. amazing. So I don't, I wasn't going to share this, but I'm going to share this. And then I'm going to share something else. Mm. And then I'll share something else. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what you do. Because <laughs> I think it's beautiful. I think like, again, like, like what he's experiencing, I think resonates deeply with the heart. And, and what we're going to, we're going to, for the couple of these episodes, we're going to go next week, just a little bit practically. I'm like going to pray of simplicity, particularly how Father Innocent teaches it to the postulants. Then we're going to talk about the primacy of love, which is going to be sweet. And then just this, one of the, 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 he has this incredible way of just like trusting God with his own sins and with the, like the, what's going on in the world that I think is going to be really a grace for a lot of us. Um, but this is, this is part of, and we'll come back to it, like just how he dealt, deals with it, like when he falls. So that like, so after he falls, like th this king full of mercy and goodness, very far from chastising me, embraces me with love, makes me eat at his table, serves me with his own hands, gives me the key of his treasures. He converses and delights himself with me incessantly in a thousand and a thousand ways and treats me in all respects as his favorite. It is thus I consider myself from time to time in his holy presence. Again, like, because what we're going to get into in a second is asking, kind of revealing to you a little bit of like some of the sacrifice and, and, and how you keep this door and this conversation going. But again, like this is like, if you want this experience to sit at the table with the Lord, to be served with his hands, to experience his delight in you, to experience yourself in a thousand and a thousand ways as his favorite. Um, I think it's, I think, I think it's worth the cost. Mm -hmm. And so, so just like, I think that's something to kind of keep in front of us. Um, before that, Hey, here's a thing that'll happen is I'm talking to like parents, they have their newborn or something like that. One of the things I'm also often going to ask them is I want to know their experience of loving their kids because I do think that in the, the, in the experiencing this love of mother or father, it's iconic. It points to the way in which like our heavenly father or our lady loves mm. us, right? Mm. Okay. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Big deep growth. Okay. So, okay, okay. I think we can pay attention to the human experience of how we enjoy having our pets around <laughs> <laughs> to shed some light on how we could interact with the Lord. Wow. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> throw back. a fallacy flag on that he one. He keeps going back. He keeps going how are you going to go from mother, father, daughter, kind son? Kind of like your dog. I needed to establish a principle that all got, mmm, that's deep. That's different. You're talking about beautiful little infants. But what about a, a beautiful little three legged naked chihuahua? <laughs> oh. <laughs> And look, at the end of the day, if pets speak to you, go with it. <laughs> I mean, like, and maybe see a doctor, depending on what kind of speaking, speaking we're talking about. Happening. All right, so here's what he says. All right, talking about uh, paying attention and actually keeping this, this ongoing, habitual, silent, secret conversation going. Don't stray too far. Meaning, like, don't stray too far from the conversation. He's talking sorry. about stray dog. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm straight I love the exact far. same thing. <laughs> One, ray, one way to recollect the mind easily in the time of prayer and preserve it more in tranquility is not to let it wander too far at other times. You should keep it strictly in the presence of God. 
And being accustomed to think of him often, you'll find it easy to keep your mind calm in the time of prayer, or at least to recall it from its wandering. So like we talk about um, going on a run with Jesus. Like if you want this to actually be a conversation that has this silent, secret, habitual conversation, like you can't break the habitual part. Like you actually have to not put in, you have to not listen to the Poco Poco podcast sometimes. Yeah, we're wow. okay with you that. total permission. We're, don't we're do okay it on with run. that. I said sometimes, just, you know, sometimes you can listen. <laughs> and then donate too when yeah. you're done but with But ideally, your <laughs> ideally at some point you stop listening because you're just in this ongoing conversation with the Lord. Um, but your monthly gift keeps going. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but like, or, or like, you know, I, I just think that this is, this is certainly something we have to lean into. Like, Hey, if you want to sit the Lord and be, and experience him loving you in a thousand ways as his favorite, if you want to have this consolation, like if, if you, if you want this, there is actually a cost. Yeah. Right. And part of the cost is surrender. And, and part of the cost is also just keeping out the noises and the distractions. Um, because, he for for it just doesn't it doesn't work and and these actual distra- distractions and noises actually are going to break the conversation right and so if you want to settle for like lentils for lesser good the lord's going to give you the freedom to do it but we're just encouraging you to make the sacrifice to lean into the greatest gifts that he wants to give you and we're going to talk next ep- episode on like practicals on how to enter into this space and keep the silence but I do think I'm going to steal a line from Father Angel. I was that, just going to say this line. Unbelievable. Oh, no, go. Say no, I'm just telling you. I don't even know. I was going to say it too. It's, it's probably not. I wasn't. <clears throat> Are we done yet? That's, <laughs> That's a Father Angel's line. <laughs> the Seriously. line that Father Angel always tells me is that if, again, if this is all true, is if the, we are sons and daughters living in the presence of God, then our behavior has to match it. Mm. Right? Was that your line? No. Okay. Um, That's a great line. (laughs) No, you said it. You did say it. No, I did say it. I did say it, but I wasn't going to say it now. (laughs) But our behavior has to match it, right? So we're going to start talking about behavior that, that, that is becoming of a son and daughter who lives like this, right? Who is living the surrender, who's living the trust, and who's doing the work, right? The spiritual life, there's a misnomer out there that like, oh, we can just be passive and God will give us everything. Absolutely, God will give you everything, but you have to respond. There is work to the spiritual life. I have to, I have to clear out the noise. There are uh, interruptions or disruptions, right? So I have to do that, but but my behavior starts to, to, to look like this. What I mean, looking at Brother Lawrence Live, you could probably be like, whoa, there's something different about him, right? And his behavior of life as a son of God looked like, it just looked in a really particular way, right? So what we're gonna start talking about is like, how do we act? Like, what does it look like interiorly and exteriorly to really live this? The the only word that I would add to that, like there's a, there's a period that, and, and unfortunately it's just not like a one-time thing, but like, there's constant detoxing that needs to happen in our lives. Constant, constant invitation. Like we were just talking about sports earlier. It's a good thing, but if this, if sports and being concerned about a score distracts me from this place of prayer and this place of relationship, that's a problem, Mm -hmm. right? So now can I, my retreat master, I would talk about Trudy often, like just in the, in October, she was, I talked to her about some of these things, these worldly things that are attractive or fascinating, not necessarily bad. She was like, bro, she didn't say bro. <laughs> but she was like, if you're going to watch the Super Bowl with the guys, just watch the Super Bowl of Jesus. And it's like, oh gosh, okay. Like, it's okay to be interested in sports. It's okay to be interested in politics. Okay, maybe not. But like to do it with Jesus, right? And so, but I, my heart and I, Father Innocent probably know, knows more than anybody else, is a constant invitation to, to be disconnected from things that distract me, right? So we all have our, our detox period, and generally that's probably a, a thing that needs to have be ongoing, but it's just not going to accidentally happen. You have to, to take things out of your life that keep you from this place, and generally they're worldly things, and generally they're things that constantly bombard us on our phones, computers, like whatever noise, it might be, noise. Right. Exactly, but we have to make firm decisions against that. So we have space that's created for this truth that's already present to be made manifest to us. Yeah. And just go for it. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, um, like any dream that you have, like you have to put work into it, you know? Um, yeah, things don't Ooh, just That's drop. deep, bro. I, well, thank you. Thank I appreciate you. Yeah. that. Sometimes that happens. Um, but like anything that you really desire, you're going to have to sacrifice something. Mm-hmm. You have to sacrifice time, relationship, whatever it is. Um, and if as Christians, as Catholics, and as sons and daughters of a father who loves us, if we truly believe that he is good and that he will give us every good thing if we ask him, we can set aside some of these things that we think are really important. Like the Mets. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> My man, let's not make this too personal, okay? Um, <clears throat> no, but no, like, yeah, anyway, it's one of these things where, okay, like, whatever, God forbid, but like, hey, if in a vision he says, you know what, Father PT, uh, my son, I love you, 
and I need you to stop rooting for the Mets. All right, Lord, it sucks. I don't think you do. Can you give me, I don't a, think you can do you give me a World Series before that happens? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. But like, like honestly, like if we can sacrifice this for a relationship, okay. And not that's only right. like a relationship that's just like fleeting and it's okay it's done within a, no this is forever mm -hmm. right because mm -hmm. at the end of our lives the lord is not going to ask us like what we okay he will ask us what we did but did we do it with him and it was it out of love for mm, him nice at nice the end one. of the day and so yeah. it's one of those things where it's work but if we really want it we'll go after it and so the encouragement is to go after it and not just to kind of yeah maybe i'll do this next next day whatever it is and so thank you father pierre Toussaint. you're welcome father mark mary this is an open invitation to anyone, no pressure. Would anyone like to make a pre quote air horn <laughs> noise? Anyone? Anyone? Okay. Okay. Cool, Before you read that quote, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go for it. Uh, yeah, I'm just, it's beautiful to live with guys and to be in community with guys, like being joining the community together. We've been together a long time. Aww. And um, yeah, yeah, just being in some area with you. <laughs> like to be with, be around guys who are constantly leaning into this. Like constantly leaning into the space of like, yeah, I just want more from the Lord. So to hear you say that, Father PD, you're like, mm -hmm. yeah, we've been with you in that, mm -hmm. and we've encouraged each other along the way to right. keep diving in and, and 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 digging deep in this space of like, yeah, Lord, I just want more of you. Right. Ultimately, at the end of the day, right. So it's been beautiful to be in a space to have friends and to have community where, yeah, these guys are going for it, and that makes me want it. So anyway, it's important, and we're going to talk about it. But just to honor you guys, like, there, this is not something we're just talking about, but daily trying to live. Can I just bring up a funny moment? <laughs> just speaking of the Mets. <laughs> Remember when I helped you like stay in the present moment and stay in a relationship when I gave a homily after the Mets oh, lost? To the, who, who did they lose to? Oh, Was man. it the, Ro the, Royals, the Royals? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that, that was the year. <laughs> so I'm preaching. I'm a deacon. I'm preaching at St. Leopold's Friary. They lose. Did they? They're, we lost the World Series. Yeah, and you guys are both Royals fans. Yes. I mean, no, we no, just grew up. We, this, <laughs> no. is, this is what, what this got is what me going. Then all of a sudden, like they're, I mean, granted, right? Kansas I mean, we cities. grew up with like George Brett. I mean, yeah. we, but we weren't fans like this guy was. Yeah, like and blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. no, no, definitely. But I was not. trying to keep him like focused. He comes <laughs> in the chapel and like, like we're friends, but mm -hmm. I, I like I totally read it wrong. Totally read it wrong. And I preached that day, and I make a comment to this guy sitting in the front row about how like the Mets, the Mets lost and things like that. And mm -hmm. it got a laugh, but he was not having any. <laughs> it. I was, was like, I was not in a good heart space. I was like, this did not go. Well. I just like totally moved on, mm -hmm. and we've laughed about it since, but. It was, I was trying to help you stay in the presence, bro. Mm. The thing that got me is just like, I rather like have as my adversary, like the person who I'm rooting against is like somebody who's just like a total, just not nice person. You know what I mean? <laughs> but you were like, oh, like, hey, it's okay, buddy. Like maybe they'll win tomorrow. I'm like, come on, this makes it even harder. Stop it. You know? <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> gonna, it made me even more bad. Or like one of the Mets players does good. Oh, that was a good hit. That's yeah. a good play, right? <laughs> Shut up. Yeah. You're not supposed to say that. You're supposed to go against me. You're the worst. Right? Oh, we're not fun to watch sports with. No, totally not. All right, so if you want the quote, you can actually read the book because we don't have time for the whole quote oh, anymore. I didn't mean to interrupt but, you, I'm well, sorry. No, you're all right, you're all right, you're all right, you're all right. But just to say this, <laughs> he has this line where he says, to do this, like, I found no small pain in this exercise, recalling, uh, meaning trying to, like, trying to kind of stay in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. But I made this my business as much all the day long as at the point of times of prayer, for all time, for at all times, every hour, every minute, even the height of my business. I drove away from my mind everything that was capable of interrupting my thought of God. So I just do think like, okay, we're talking like if you want if you want the sweetness of like thirty years of consolation of soul that you have to like try and hide from people. If you want to have an awareness of God while you're um, in the kitchen and people several persons are calling for you at the same time. If you want that experience to be like you're on your knees before the blessed sacrament. If you want to have Jesus treat you or experience him treating you as his favorite and going on runs for Jesus. Keep going, keep going, keep going. All that sort of stuff. <laughs> you, there's going to be cost. Like there's, there's sacrifice and there's perseverance. It doesn't happen overnight and it doesn't happen easily. Um, you know, unless the grain of wheat dies, it remains only a grain of wheat. So if you want this, which I believe is for you and the fulfillment of your heart, um, we got to just cut out the noise and we got to start to practice. Mm. Amen. 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 Let's pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for Brother Lawrence, for all Carmelite saints. We pray, Lord, that we may ourselves lead um, and, and lean into any invitation you're inviting us to, to a greater, creating greater space and sacrifice and um, to grow in the practice of this silent, habitual, ongoing conversation of our souls uh, with you. And um, may all things we do be with your blessing and your presence. 
And we ask for the spirit of prayer for ourselves and for all of our listeners. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Again, thanks, listeners. If, again, if you're able to make a, a donation, you can go to spiritjuice.org forward slash poco a poco. A link if you want to just find, get that, go to Hallow and get the Hallow book. It should be in the show notes or description. And um, thanks, everybody, who's sent us mugs. We got John Paul the Great University today. What do you got? Oh, you there. <laughs> this is the one I took from over there. Henry, Henry so. Wharton sent us some. Yeah. From his, his company. Where I'm rocking Net Canada. Net Canada. Thanks also for sharing your missionaries with us. <laughs> and love begins here missions. Small things, great loves. So if you want to send us a mug so we can just have it up here and shout you out, we'd appreciate it. Does that, and, does that smell like pickle juice? No, nah, it doesn't smell like pickle juice. <laughs> wonder, haters. Wonder. I'm on the road. People ask me about that. I'm carrying a water bottle around. Is that the pickle juice <laughs> water bottle? Is it? Yeah. Good. Do you carry that one though? I do. See? Like works fine. It doesn't great. taste like pickles. Good points for me. <laughs> See you next week. Peace, Peace, guys. Peace. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. Little by little we learn a little more each day that God is love. That life is short. That all will be well.